Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. The Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you The Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wayton and Sam Moore, with music by Claude Sweeten. Gildersleeve in just a moment. Some foods may be scarce, but there's plenty of good wholesome bread, thanks to America's hard-working farmers, millers, and bakers. So have your family eat plenty of bread at every meal, and be sure to serve delicious parquet margarine with it. Parquet is the quality spread for bread that's made by Kraft, and Kraft quality in margarine means flavor that's fresh, delicate, satisfying. Parquet margarine makes bread, hot toast, pancakes, and waffles taste extra good. And it's extra nourishing, too. Parquet margarine is actually one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more, Kraft guarantees every pound of parquet to contain 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So remember the next time you buy bread, also buy the spread that adds such nourishing goodness to it. Ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. Let's join the great Gildersleeve, whom we find sitting quietly in his parlor reading the evening paper. He'd be feeling completely contented, except for a slight pang of hunger, which makes him a little edgy with certain people. His nephew, Leroy, for example. Hey! Hey, Unc! I'm trying to read the paper, Leroy. Yeah, give me the comic page, will you? You may have the paper when I have finished. Oh, gosh, you always read the real estate page and everything. Supper's almost ready. Leroy, would you mind getting your junk out of the living room, please? I'm expecting company this evening. You must be. Look at her hair, Unc. Huh? Well, something new, my dear. Oh, I've tried it before, but not in public. Like it? Very nice. Gives a very nice effect. Would you please make Leroy move his junk? Who's coming for corn's sake? Major Ball? <laughs> oh, he's married. Um, Keith Kelsey's dropping in for a while. Keith Kelsey? No kidding, Marge, is he? What's so wonderful about that? Well, he's the best hockey player they've had at Summerfield High in 20 years. Besides, I thought he was going around with Francie. He was. Gee, congratulations, Marge. Gosh, I never thought... Uh, just a moment, Leroy. May I ask who this young man is, Marjorie? Leroy just told you. The coach says he's the best hockey player we've had in 20 years. Just a minute. This fellow's named Keith Kelsey, you say? Yes. I don't trust any boy named Keith. Oh, Oh, uh, Keith, that's silly. Oh, it's silly, is it? Isn't he one of the fellows that was mixed up in that mischief down at the high school last year? What mischief? You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) That gang that kidnapped the Polish janitor so the school had no heat. Yeah, he thought of the whole thing. Oh, he did not think it up. Well, chances are he did think it up, but that's not the question. Was he involved in it? Well, they used his car. Oh, he's got a car, eh? Yeah, he had a souped up Ford, but he couldn't get gas, so he had to soup it down again. <laughs> if it was his car, he must have been one of the ringleaders in the kidnapping. A very dangerous stunt. Dangerous? It endangered the health of hundreds of high school pupils and teachers. Oh, well, nobody got sick. They all went home. It was perfect. <laughs> well, I don't trust this boy. I don't want you seeing too much of him, my dear. Well, I don't see why. I knew a fellow named Keith in college. He was no good either. Keith Robinson. But Keith Kelsey was the best hockey player in the state, practically. I think it's a great honor if he wants to come here, even. I don't care if he's the best hockey player in the world. He, he has wavy hair, too. Marjorie, you're, you're talking like a lovesick schoolgirl. I'm not lovesick. Well, no boy is perfect, and you better understand that right now. You be very careful with this young man. Oh, I will. Please make Leroy get his junk out of here, Unky. Move your junk, Leroy. Okay. Gosh, I hope you'll at least let me say hello to him. Yes, but that's all. Couldn't I talk to him a little? No. Hey, Unk, if I talked to him, I could kind of keep an eye on him and Marge. 
No, my boy. If there's to be any chaperoning, I'll take care of it. I hope none will be necessary, my dear. Oh, this is all so embarrassing. I almost wish he wasn't coming. But not really. No, wait a minute. Uh, maybe you better answer it, Leroy. I want to go upstairs and make sure my hair is all right. Your hair is perfectly all right, my dear. Good enough for anybody. Well, I want to look at it anyway. Uh, go on, answer the door, Leroy. Okay, okay. Hi. Hello. Is Marjorie... Yeah, come on in. I'm her brother. Oh. My name's Leroy. I saw you playing the game against Riverton. Oh, you did? That was a pretty good game. Is, is your sister here? Yeah, she went upstairs to fix her hair. No. Oh. Uh, take off your coat, why don't you? Yeah, okay. You want to see my skates? I just got them for Christmas. Look, tubulars. Yeah. Well, they probably wouldn't stand up very long in a game. No, not in a real game. Well, they're just a cheap pair. Can't get decent skates these days. You want to see my stick? Well, I, uh... Oh, hello, Marge. Hello, Keith. I thought you weren't coming. I was upstairs doing my geometry. Oh, you were? <laughs> Here's my hockey stick, Keith. It's regulation. Yeah. See, that's all right. Uh, you left-handed? No, why? Well, that's a left-handed stick. You'll never raise a puck off the ice with that. <laughs> so that's it. Well, for corn's sake, I want... Leroy. What? Oh, I'll go in a minute. <laughs> Well, Marjorie, is this the young man you were telling me about? Oh, yes. Uh, this is my Uncle Mort, Keith. Just call me Mr. Gildersleeve. How are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'm very well, thank you. Suppose we step into the parlor for a moment. Yeah, let's all go in the parlor. Not you, Leroy. <laughs> you go upstairs and get at your homework. Well, it's all done, practically. Leroy. Mm, okay. You know, I might talk to Piggy about trading hockey sticks. So long, Keith. So long. Now, uh, young man, sit down. Tell me something about yourself. Oh, Unky. Well, there isn't much to tell about me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I wonder if I know your father. It could be. He has the Oldsmobile Agency there on State Street. Yeah? Right now, he's selling Venetian blinds made out of plastic. Oh, <laughs> uh, I see. You're the water commissioner, aren't you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. I'd like to see that pump sometime out at the reservoir. It must be quite a piece of machinery. Oh, it is. I didn't have a darn good engineer out there. It wouldn't run ten minutes. Is that a fact? Yes, my boy, that's a fact. That's one thing I'm very good at. I know how to pick a good man. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. And don't you ever forget it. <laughs> well, I'll leave you young people now. Go in my study and do a little reading. Okay. Glad to have met you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Funny old duck, isn't he? He's all right. Sure. Say, you look pretty. I'm glad you think so. Come on, get your hat and coat and we'll go over and join the gang. What gang? Oh, the gang. They're over at Barney's Beanery. Pete and Sally and Henry and Grace and all the rest of the gang. Come on, we'll have some fun. Oh, it sounds darling, but I'll have to ask Uncle Mort if I can go. You want me to ask him? No, no, I better. He's kind of funny. He sure looks funny. <laughs> Well, go ahead and tell him you're going out. Okay. Be with you in a second. Oh, um, excuse me, Unky. You haven't been talking very loud, Marjorie. Haven't we? Uh, we didn't want to disturb you. A quiet murmur would disturb me far less than complete silence, my dear. It would? Well, um, I just wanted to tell you we're going out for a little while. Well, now, wait a minute. Now, Unky, I'm only going to Barney's Beanery. The gang's all over there. What gang? Everybody. In that souped-up car? No, sir. It isn't souped up anymore. Well, soup down, then. I don't know this boy, Marjorie. I'm not asking you to go out with him. <laughs> Listen, if that young fellow wants to spend any time with you, he can spend it here or I know what's going on. Unky, not so loud. Why can't I talk loud? This is my own house, isn't it? But, Unky... Um, you tell Master Keith that I won't let you go out this evening. If he wants to see you, he can stay here. Said? I'm sorry, Keith. He says I can't go out. Couldn't you possibly stay here? Well, I... I promised the gang I'd be over. I thought I could bring you naturally. Naturally? 
Well, she promised them. Yeah. Gee, that's too bad. If only I hadn't promised, I... Well, you... sure, you have to keep a promise. Yeah, I guess so. Well, some other time, huh, Marge? If you want. Oh, you bet. Oh, here's my coat. Well, so long. So long. Now I've done it. Eat your prunes, Leroy. I am. Shoot the cream, will you, Uncle? Cream is unnecessary on prunes, my boy. Yeah, but it sure helps. There's a war on. Uh, what's keeping Marjorie? I don't know. Maybe she overslept. Maybe she was out late with Keith. Don't talk so much and eat your prunes. Okay. Gosh, all I was doing was answering... Eat your prunes. <laughs> Miss Gillis, please, you ready for your egg? Yes, Bertie. Uh, egg, did you say? Yes, because there's only one. Eggman didn't come yesterday, and he's been acting kind of high and mighty lately, and I ain't surprised that he didn't show up. <sighs> if he comes back, be good to him, Bertie. Yes, I'll bake him a cake. <laughs> Fine situation. You have to treat the egg man like visiting royalty. Those are the brakes, kid. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, here's Mart. Hi. Hi. Good morning, my dear. Pass the sugar, will you please, Leroy? Here. Have a good time with Keith last night, Marge. Wonderful. Uncle Mort practically kicked him out of the house. What? Now, Marjorie. Keith had a date with a gang, and Uncle Mort wouldn't let me go along. Gosh, Uncle, you must be nuts. She's the best hockey player that ever came to see her She's out of the wind up with somebody that can't even skate You stay out of this, Leroy Yes, you loaf some eggs, Miss Gilkeep Morning, Miss Marjorie Good morning, Bertie You feel like the oatmeal this morning? No, thank you, Bertie Just my grapefruit and some toast, I guess I'd offer you an egg, but there ain't any Uh, would you like my egg, Marjorie? You want your uncle's egg, honey? No, thank you, Bertie uh, Marjorie feels I treated her unfairly last night, Bertie. I refused to allow her to go to a nightclub with a young man I know nothing about. A nightclub? He's talking about Barney's beanery, Bertie. And there's nothing the matter with Keith Kelsey, either. I didn't say there was anything the matter with him, Bertie. <laughs> I just don't want Marjorie running around with strangers. He is not a stranger, Bertie. I've known him ever since the sixth grade, only... Only he never noticed me before. Yeah, I've seen him play hockey, too. I told you to stay out of this, Leroy. <laughs> I'm leaving anyway. Cheer up, Marge. Maybe everything will be okay. Thanks, Leroy. I don't think there's much hope. Not ain't as bad as all that, child. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, no, it isn't. Keith is the nicest boy in the Summerfield High School, and he's always gone around with other girls like Francie and Eleanor Sloan. And now the first time he's even noticed me, you treat him like a criminal. But I... You cross-examine him. You practically tell him you're going to listen to every word we say. And then you won't let me go out to a perfectly innocent place with him. Marjorie, please. All my life, I've been waiting for just one nice boy. But if I know how you were going to treat him, well, it'll be your fault if I wind up an old maid. You won't be an old maid, Marge. I'll stick with you. You go <laughs> Confounded, Bertie. I'm just trying to do the right thing by the girl. I know it, Miss Gilsey. What she needs is a mother. I expect you're right. You ain't making any plans along them lines, is you? Oh, no. <laughs> Must be Judge Hooker, Bertie. It's his turn to drive me downtown. I'll let him in, Miss Gilsey. You finish the call. Thank you. Good morning, Judge. And a good morning to you, Bertie. Is the Lord of the Manor ready to fare forth on the highway? Not quite, Judge. And you ain't feeling so chipper, either. Oh, well, Throckmorton, what do you knew this morning? I don't know, Horace. Marjorie thinks I'm scaring away her boyfriends. Well, are you? I don't know what to do. I don't know how anybody raises children. Heaven knows I'm no expert. No, you're not. <laughs> I suppose what the child really needs is a mother. I don't want to get mixed up with any more women. Well, there are plenty of women in the family. Children have several aunts. Yeah. Why don't you invite one of them for a visit? Hmm. Better stay a few days and straighten things out. Not a bad idea, Horace. Let me see. Catherine's got kids of her own. She couldn't come. That is a good, sensible woman. Yeah, and may the Lord deliver me from good, sensible women. What's the matter with Hilda? Yeah, I always liked Hilda. Got a little bounce to her. <laughs> Shoot her a wire. I might do that. Quiet. Here comes Marjorie. 
Well, Marjorie. Good morning, Judge. You're looking as fresh as a bright May morning. Thank you. Well, my dear, off to school now, I suppose. Yep, off to school. (laughs) (laughs) Craig Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. To help our nation's industries meet increased production quotas, we'll all have to pitch in and work even harder these next critical months of the war. Well, that's going to call for extra energy. And here's an economical food that provides energy galore. It's parquet margarine. Yes, parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread that's made by Kraft. Parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve. And besides furnishing food energy, every pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. Now, that's important, too, because every time you spread parquet on bread, biscuits, rolls, and muffins... You add more nourishing goodness to these other wholesome foods. So for food energy, for vitamin A, and for downright good eating, buy and serve Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine. Remember, Kraft makes this nutritious spread for America's bread. Yes, Kraft makes Parquet. Well, let's get back now to Summerfield and see what's going on. And if you want to know what's going on in Summerfield, there isn't a better place to find out than Peavy's Pharmacy. Of course, the noon hour rush is over, and the proprietor usually catches a short nap back in his prescription room during the lull that follows, but, well, let's drop in there anyway. Uh Uh-oh, he's got a customer at the soda fountain, and it's Marjorie. Do you find that milkshake to your liking, Marjorie? It's fine. That's good. Not too sweet? Can't be too sweet. Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Then it's a matter of taste, I suppose. I uh, don't want to appear to pry, Marjorie, but shouldn't you be in school now? I should, but I'm not. So I see. You're sure that won't lead to trouble? What do I care? Yeah, that's hard to answer. (laughs) Finish? I'll have another. Another chocolate malt? Make it a double. Oh, Marjorie, I'm afraid two of these would make you sick. What do I care? Well, you're the customer. Two chocolate malls, I don't know what to say. Mr. Peavy. Yes? Were you ever in love? Was I ever in love? (laughs) Well, I guess I must have been. I'm married. (laughs) Well, I mean seriously. Mm, I'd say it. <laughs> I'd say it was serious. People don't just get married for the fun of it. Well, did you ever fall in love with someone who never paid you a bit of attention, never even looked at you, and you thought you'd just die if he didn't? And then all of a sudden he did, and you were so happy. And then your uncle came along and spoiled it. Uh, no, I can't say that I ever found myself in exactly that situation. Then you don't know how empty life can be. The complete futility of it all. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, you wouldn't know. What good is life? What good is anything? What good is education? I asked myself that at lunch today, and during recess I just walked out. That's why you're here. Yes. I thought you were the one person who'd understand. Well, I'm a little afraid to go back now. A little afraid to go home. Why should I be? It's my life. What good is it? Just tell me, Mr. Peavy. What is there to live for? Well, you've still got a chocolate malt coming. <laughs> Mr. Peavy, I thought you were a friend. If I thought you were going to laugh oh, at I me... I don't mean to laugh at you, Marjorie, but just think. You're how old? Sixteen. You've still got a few things to look forward to. You've still got a few years left before you shuffle off. After all, there's always tomorrow, you know. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow goes on this petty pace from day to day. That's Shakespeare. Yeah, I know. Oh, I forgot your chocolate malt. I want you to understand, Marjorie, the pharmacy accepts no responsibility for this. We usually serve only one of these to a customer. Oh, here comes your uncle. My uncle? Coming right across the street there. Oh, I can't let him see me. Uh, Mr. Peavy, please, could I go out the back way? Well, it's not customary, but I don't see any harm. 
Right through the prescription room there. You'll find the door. I'll pay you next time. That's all right. Oh, don't fall over the ash can in the alley. Don't mind a little hide and seek, but I don't want to be responsible for any broken bones here. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, hello, Peavy. What can I do for you? Oh, give me a chocolate malt. You too? What do you mean? Uh, nothing. Uh, there's your malt. Huh? Not there in front of you. I just mixed it. <laughs> you must be a mind reader. No. No, I mixed it for a customer who was just in here. But he was suddenly called out of town. <laughs> I take it you didn't have any dessert for lunch. I didn't have any lunch. Didn't feel like it. Didn't feel like working either. I didn't get a thing done at the office all morning. Confounded Peavy, one girl can be more trouble than six boys. Is that right? Now you take Leroy. I have to holler at him a lot, but at least we understand each other. But Marjorie... Do you know she hadn't spoken to me for three days? I ask you, is that any way for a girl to treat her old uncle? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Gildersleeve, girls will be girls. You think so? No, absolutely. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Now, when a girl gets to be Marjorie's age, she's apt to get the idea that nobody understands her. How do you know so much about girls? Well, I happen to be married to one. <laughs> and she still thinks nobody understands her. At times. And at times, I'm ready to agree with her. <laughs> What do you do about it? Well, in Mrs. Peavy's case, I just go take a walk. But with Marjorie, it's a little different. I'd say what she needs is the companionship of young people her own age. Well, you could be right. There's such a thing as seeing too much of Leroy. I see Marjorie come in here with her... <laughs> come in here with her young friends in the afternoon, and they giggle and gossip and talk nonsense. That's what girls want at that age. I guess that's what they want at any age. Peavy? You know what? You give me an idea. No, I wouldn't say that. Yes, you have, by George. You give me an idea. You're not going. You haven't touched the milkshake. Sell it to the next man who comes in. I've sold it twice already. <laughs> you play it right, you can run it up into a fortune. Peavy, you know what I'm going to do? No, what are you going to do, Mr. Gillis? I'm going to put an end to all this nonsense. I thought of a way to make Marjorie forget her troubles. Yes? I'm going to give her a party, a surprise party. No, you're getting somewhere. Yes, sir. I'll invite all her girlfriends over, and I'll just leave them there to giggle and gossip to their heart's content. You mean you're only going to invite the girlfriends? Yeah, only your girlfriends. It's a strictly a hen party. Well, but... <laughs> Plenty of good food, no grown-ups, no boys to spoil the party. <laughs> uh, she'll love it, Peavy. Well, so long, Peavy. <laughs> Thanks for the idea. I don't think he ever got the idea. Well, that's five of them, Leroy. Penny, Linda, Martha, Virginia, and Francie. Can you think of any other girls I ought to invite? No, but there's a couple of those you shouldn't invite. Francie, for instance. That's ridiculous. Her father and mother are very good friends of mine. Just the same. She and Marge aren't even talking to each other. Well, that's nonsense, and I'm not going to encourage it. Uh-oh. Here's Bertie. Well, what luck, Bertie? Excuse me, I've been to every market in this town, but I couldn't find no marshmallows only in one place. Oh? You got them, then? No, sir, I didn't. Why not? Because the man made me mad. He told me if I wanted to buy a box of marshmallows, I'd have to buy two boxes of brand and a bottle of no good brass polish. Yes. Why... The dirty crook. Well, never mind the marshmallows. We'll think of something else. Must be something girls like to do besides toast marshmallows. Oh, I know. Make fudge. Oh, boy. <laughs> now, here's what I planned. The girls will arrive at 8 o'clock. It'll be a big surprise. And they'll all go down to the roller skating rink and skate that'll tend. And they'll come home here and have a snack and make fudge. Don't you think Marjorie will like that, Leroy? I suppose so. Girls are crazy. <laughs> It'll be a nice, wholesome evening. You're not kidding. Well, I better go and get started on the sandwiches. Now, wait a minute. When Marjorie gets home, don't anybody say anything to her about this, you understand? Oh, I won't say a word. Just pretend that nothing's happened. Let her go on as she has been. If she doesn't want to talk to anybody at dinner, okay, let her alone. I want this to be a surprise. We'll have some fun out of it, eh, Leroy? How am I going to have any fun out of it? Well, she'll be sitting there like a thundercloud all through dinner with no idea of what's in store for her. But we'll know, won't we? Yeah. It's her. Uh, evening, Miss Marjorie. Good evening, Bertie. Leroy, I saw your snowman outside. It's simply super. 
Anki, darling, you're wearing the tie I gave you. Oh, but you must let me straighten it for you. Huh? There. Now give me a nice kiss. Huh? <laughs> How soon's dinner, Bertie? Any minute now. I'll be right down. What's come over her? You tell me. Oh, uh, Uncle Morris. Uh, yes, my dear? I want to apologize. I guess I haven't been very nice these last few days. Well, I uh, guess I wasn't very understanding. Well, it's all right now. Everything's all right. Everything's wonderful. You're just going to leave us guessing or you're going to tell us what happened? <laughs> Leroy, would you be a dear sweet boy and go away so I can talk to Uncle Mort? Oh, for corn's sake. All I ever do is get sent away. Never mind. You can stay. I don't care who knows. Guess what? I ran into Keith this afternoon... And he said he'd been looking for me. I wasn't looking for him. He was looking for me. And guess what he said about Francie? He said she was too old-fashioned. He said she was conventional. I don't know that you can hang a girl for that. Well, that's not all. I'm going to see him again tonight. Well, now, my dear. Oh, it's all right this time. It's perfectly all right. He's coming over here. Over here tonight? Oh, It's but... all right, Uncle Mort. We're going to do our geometry together. Yes, sir. Uh... Well, that's fine, my dear, but <laughs> the thing is, I've arranged a little sort of a surprise party for you and some of your girlfriends. I told them you'd all go roller skating. Tonight? Yeah, the girls are coming at 8. Yeah, Francie and Penny. Francie and... coming here? You gods, Keith is coming at 8.30. Oh, this is terrible. No, Marge. Oh, please. why did you do it? Oh, Uncle Mort. Well, don't worry, I'll handle it. I'll take them skating myself. <laughs> oh, Auntie, would you? Gee, did I say that? <laughs> Skating isn't hard. No, but the floor is. Or not. Oh, I know what it is. It's from Aunt Hilda. Aunt Hilda, there's nothing wrong. No, no. I wrote to her and asked her if she wouldn't come and stay with us for a few days. Don't you think that'd be nice? Oh, I'd love it. Aunt Hilda's such fun. Good old Aunt Hilda. I knew she'd come, but it was only to get away from Hattie. Yeah. Now, let's see what she had to say. <sighs> Sorry, unable to come. Frank, home on leave. Hattie coming instead. <laughs> what? Hattie coming instead? Arrives 7.45 Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. How did I ever get into this? Aunt Hattie. Well, those are the breaks, kid. <laughs> Good night, my dear. Good night, everybody. Here's the famous program with Rick McQuad Street. With the Santa Clara Police, speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of Parquet Marger and a complete line of famous quality food products. Inviting you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Remember, there are delicious prepared mustards, too, in Kraft's famous line of quality foods. For more zestful enjoyment of salads, sandwich meats, hot-cooked vegetables, and deviled eggs, add the delightful flavor tang of Kraft Salad Mustard. This tangy, golden Kraft Salad Mustard is spiced just right for most everyone's taste, blends smoothly into cooked dishes, adds lip-smacking flavor to gravies and barbecue sauce. Your family and guests are sure to like Kraft Salad Mustard. It's so appetizing in so many tempting ways. You'll want to try this other delicious variety, too. Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added. It's just a bit sharper and oh so tasty when added to a sauce for shrimp or spread on cold meat cuts. Buy both of these grand flavor treats, nippy Kraft horseradish mustard and tangy golden Kraft salad mustard. Tomorrow, ask for Kraft quality mustard. This is the National Broadcasting Company.